So good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you've all had yourself a little breakfast. Uh, my name is Rebecca. I'm a project uh, manager for urban design here at the city and in charge of this event. Uh, I'm not going to have this very long, but I want to sincerely welcome you all to our C40 Reinventing Cities meetup event. Uh, we are really happy to see you all here. Uh, I can say that we are really proud of taking part in this competition. And I think I can speak for all of us here at the city that our primary goals towards the future are through sustainability. And participating in this competition is a really important step towards that goal. So a little bit about our plan today. We will have some great guests here with us with uh, presentations. And after they have finished, we will have some time for a uh, Q&A session. And then when we are finished around 11, we will go outside through the front entrance. So there will be a bus waiting for us to take us to the sites we are offering. So uh, we will start with a visit to Guvenes, the harbor area, and uh, then to Sævarhöfði, where the silos are. So first on stage is um, Costanza de Stefani from the C40 Reinventing Cities. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here today. So yeah, I'm Costanza de Stefani. I work in the project management of Reinventing Cities uh, from London at C40. Uh, so what, what is Reinventing Cities? It's an international competition, as many of you know, uh, for urban design, for innovative, resilient and zero carbon projects. Uh, and who is C40? C40, Clim Climate Leadership Group, um, it's a network of 96 cities around the world. The largest cities participate to this network. Uh, we represent more than 700 million citizens around the world and about one fourth of the global economy. Uh, Mayor Eric Rossetti from LA is our chair and Michael Bloomberg is the president of the board. Reykjavik is non-C40 city, but we are still so happy that it can participate with us in reinventing cities. So we, our focus at C40 is the, the climate crisis, the global climate crisis. Uh, in October, we had the climate summit in Copenhagen. Uh, one of our, our guiding documents, it Deadline 2020, which is a document that shows how the Paris Agreement and the NDCs can be put in action in cities through city climate action. The Global Green New Deal, it's also another sort of guiding document for us that leads us to a just transition that is just for people and for all inhabitants towards climate action. So why are we focusing on cities? Because cities will shape our future. The way we build today will define our future of tomorrow. So buildings, as you may know, account for more than 50% of global emission from C40 cities. And construction material especially represents 30% of global resource consumption. And as we all know, the world is urbanizing and we will have to construct many new cities in the future. So where, where should we focus? Uh, the, the main greenhouse gas emission sectors are buildings, as I said, mobility, our cities has to focus on strategy for a non-sustainable mobility, and also waste. We have to dramatically cut our waste in the next years. So reinventing cities, innovation for climate. Uh, the goals of this international competition are to reduce emissions from buildings, decarbonize the real estate, Mm, enhance and propose innovative solutions for urban planning, new sustainable services for inhabitants of our cities, and try to catalyze through those pilot projects, innovative projects in cities, a systemic change. Actually, an ecological revolution. So how does it work? Many of you might know. Uh, so the cities identify underutilized sites that are ready to, are ready to be leased or sold for redevelopment. C40, so us, help to organize and support the whole competition and support the city throughout the project. And then probably you, bidding teams uh, of uh, private actors generally, uh, made of developers, artists, architects, urbanists, come up with ideas to redevelop the site. Our common goal is a decarbonized urban future and innovative solutions for climate and for our cities. 
Uh, so this is actually the second edition. The first edition had a, an incredible success. You can see in the second part of the site some numbers uh, regarding articles and hashtags that came out uh, of the first edition. Uh, multidisciplinary teams participated and on average every team had about 14 different firms in site. The teams um, and about 20 winning projects were announced in 10 participating cities in the past edition. So really great numbers. Uh, in the first editions, new models of, of living and, and building came out. So ideas related to eco-construction, sustainable materials, uh, sustainable design, passive houses, reversible buildings. Um, a lot of projects were harnessing energy efficiency, sustainable mobility, car-free slots. And uh, about 65% of the projects were net zero emissions from the first edition. And also green activity, fab labs, incubators for startups, um, as well as green spaces, urban agriculture. These were some of the ideas that came out. Here there is a photo of Vite in Milan and tomorrow Montreal in Montreal, Canada. Um, and also it's, it's interesting because the first competition um, really set new, the winning project set new national standards for some countries. For instance, in Italy, the first zero carbon social housing project was made, and actually in Reykjavik, the largest wood building in Iceland, uh, was Living Landscape, one of their winning projects. Uh, and it's also interesting because reinventing cities solution can be scaled up and replicated in other city is just not an idea that stays in one site. Uh, some ideas could be the upcycling of building materials from nearby demolition sites that can be used to construct new projects. Some cities, uh, through reinventing cities, are also, also pushing forward sort of the regulation and the procurement and uh, sort of enhancing environmental standards through the competition itself. And these are just two photos of the winning projects in Reykjavik. I'm sure you may know about Living Landscape and Fabric. Two great projects. Uh, the first one, a net zero carbon building. The second one, harnessing uh, waste and waste management in a sustainable way. So really incredible ideas that came out. And we will have after uh, a speaker talking about the Living Landscape project. So today, who are the participating cities now? You can see them on this map. Uh, it's nine cities around the world with 25 sites to be reinvented. So really challenging and we're happy to have Reykjavik on board again. So the, the 10 challenges that the team have to address are, are the following that you see in this slide. You can find everything, the guidance document, the regulation document on the website. Um, but we really want teams to focus on the carbon impact of their projects, especially the first two um, challenges are mandatory. So really energy efficiency and life cycle assessment, sustainable materials must be included in your projects and your proposals. And then as well, uh, as much challenges as you can harness, the better. So resilience and sustainability, water management, waste manage management in a sustainable way, inclusive actions, uh, community benefits. These are some of the key challenges that we would like to see addressed. As you may know, the, the competition happens in two phases. We are now in the expression of interest phase, or the first phase. Um, where actually bidding teams are invited to present uh, before the deadline for submission, which in Reykjavik is the 20th of April, a um, few documents. It it's a light proposal, actually, in the first phase. The description of the bidding team, uh, of your organization, of your team, a presentation of the project, uh, highlighting how you are trying to face some of the ch 10 challenges that I highlighted before, and a presentation of the intended legal and financial setup. Um, and then three teams per site on average will be selected to the second stage of the competition, which is phase two, where final proposals are being prepared by teams. The final proposal have to include a more detailed presentation of the project. Again, the bidding team forms, the legal and financial agreement, the intended one, and also a performance monitoring pro protocol. Actually, at the end, uh, there will be one winning team per site that will be announced. 
So it's, it's a common process, the one that I showed you until now, but local specificity. So in phase one, there is the common regulation document, but then there is the SSR, uh, which relates to every site per city, uh, site-specific requirements, and it's a document that highlights the, the ideas for redevelopment of the site and all the characteristics of the site. Uh, in phase two, there will be a specific regulation um, detailed by the city that will be given to finalist teams. C40 support, supports throughout the competition, but the city has the sort of the final word and will arrange the, the legal and financial setup at the end. So a little bit more on the characteristics of the bidding teams. We would really like teams to be multidisciplinary, engaging different stakeholders, different actors, uh, artists, architects, community members, and if possible, also future user, users of the site that you are redeveloping. From phase one, there has to be at least one architect, uh, an environmental expert, that will be the responsible, uh, sort of in name of the team for the site and for the project. Uh, possibly the team has to have financial capacity uh, to implement the project, uh, not from phase one, we don't need an investor from phase one, but yes, please, in phase two. Um, the team has to identify a representative that will bear the responsibility in name of the team, and, and also the main point of contact for us, uh, C40, and for the city. And how do we evaluate the expression of interest? It will be, it will be evaluated um, with three key points that you see here. So the relevance of the project um, according to the specificities of the city and the challenges of the city, the suitability of the team, uh, as well as the coherence between the compositions and the skills of the team and the project that is presented, and the solution proposed to address the 10 challenges, the first two are mandatory again, and the others, the more the better. Uh, you can have all the information, as you may know, on the website for Inventing Cities. You will find in the page guidelines all the documentation, all the regulation documents. And in sites in competition, you can see the sites in Reykjavik, find the SSR, see all the events that are happening in Reykjavik, so just keep updated. And you can find in the data room of each site all the relevant documents referred to the, competition, to the site in competition. On the page Team Up, please, I encourage you to use this page, is a space where you can propose your ideas, write your contact, and try to actually find new members to form your team. In the page Events, you find the events, and in the FAQ, you can also ask questions, and you will find the frequently asked questions. And here I have just a small video that recaps. Reinventing Cities a global competition for innovative, zero carbon and resilient projects. Cities occupy 2% of the world's land mass, but in terms of climate impact, they leave an enormous footprint, accounting for more than 70% of the global CO2 emissions. Also, with 90% of the world's urban areas situated on coastlines, Cities are at high risk of some of the most devastating impacts of climate change. The way we plan and build our cities today will define our cities of tomorrow. Zero carbon and climate resilient developments must become the norm and it is therefore important that cities get it right. Reinventing cities in a nutshell. C40's Reinventing Cities is a global design competition that seeks to unlock underutilized spaces in cities and engage the private sector in decarbonized and resilient urban planning. Whether it's a small plot of land, a large new development area, or an abandoned building, the goal is to create reinvented, sustainable, and community-focused places. The competition comprises two phases. The first phase consists of the general expression of interest. At this point, teams get formed combining architects, developers, engineers, environmentalists, neighborhood groups, innovators, and artists. They submit their intentions and ideas for transforming the unused city spaces into models of sustainability and social inclusion. During the second phase, C40 and the participating cities form juries of experts to select three finalist teams for each site. 
These teams will be given the opportunity to work out their proposals into more detail by providing a clear and reliable carbon assessment of their project and developing their solutions to address the 10 challenges for climate defined by the competition guidelines by making sure the project is well integrated into the local context and by proposing a relevant bid to buy or lease the site from the city. At the end of the bidding process, the juries select the best project for each site with environmental and community benefits as primary considerations. And the winner is... Thank you, I hope you enjoyed the video. Reinventing City. And just to wrap up, uh, this is just a quote from our executive director at C40, Mark Watts. Uh, we are um, supporting again uh, Reinventing Cities competition for the second time, as we really believe uh, in C40 that we can really use the skills, the creativity of, of stakeholders in city to reinvent our cities in face of climate change through this competition. And this is just the contact. Uh, me and Helen Chartier are, are working on this project specifically. So thank you. Here is again a link to the website. Uh, tak. Thank you for having me today. Thank you so much, Costanza. Really happy to have you here. And thank you for a great presentation. Uh, let me see. So next up on stage, I want to welcome the mayor of um, the city of Reykjavik, Dagobi Ekerson. Welcome. Uh, great to see you all. And uh, uh, I'm very happy that we are going to the second phase of reinventing cities. Uh, we jumped into the first phase. Uh, I was attending a meeting in Paris where they had this seminar on this wonderful project that uh, is based on an idea that was developed in Paris called Reinventing Paris. Uh, and uh, a lot of fantastic projects have been developed in Paris on basis of that. The only problem was that when we knew about it, uh, we had 48 hours to enter. Uh, but anyway, we did. Uh, and uh, tendered two building plots, one in Laumule and, and one in Artunshavdi, uh, which uh, uh, opened up new possibilities. And, and, uh, and what we are thinking uh, with participating in this is to get new thought, new projects that are uh, very focused on environment and climate but also on design and what they give out for the city and society. So uh, I'm very happy to be here and uh, go through the next two building plots. Uh, so we see this as uh, a very nice way to uh, uh, develop interesting spots within the city. Uh, the proposed site for this phase is Gurvenes, uh, where we are uh, developing uh, a new district for uh, creative industries. Uh, Reykjavik Studios uh, have set up a uh, f a filming complex, a studio there, and uh, we already see a cluster of uh, film connected companies uh, settling down there. We have also developed uh, uh, the area for uh, uh, residentials, and uh, so, so this is Guvenes, and then we have Saivarhavde, uh, not that far from Kovines, uh, but anyway, it's on a landfill. It's an old uh, cement plant. Uh, and uh, we have.
have some old industrial buildings, silos there, uh, that we want to uh, make great again. And, uh, but both of them are kind of uh, old industrial sites. Uh, Gövenes is interesting. Uh, it, it was an old fertilizer plant, which was funded by uh, Marshall, the Marshall program after the Second World War, uh, and uh, was active until uh, there was a major explosion there. Um, and uh, people that know fertilizer plants know that they can be quite dangerous, especially if they explode. And uh, uh, so we have been transforming that through planning and uh, a Dutch team uh, won the competition of how to develop it. Uh, here you see where it's situated in uh, in the city, uh, and uh, a part of the, the vision for the site is to connect it by uh, a harbor, uh, harbor public transport, Vatnastraito, uh, uh, where it could connect by boat uh, from the city center and the new areas being built at the uh, seafront. Uh, we see this plot not necessarily as uh, a huge development, but something highly interesting for the area and for Reykjavik as such. Uh, Gova means steam, so it's uh, quite interesting if we could see something health related for the people working there or living there or coming there, uh, such as steam bath, sauna, sea swimming facilities, uh, or something uh, connected to the hospitality industry. So this is one of the proposed sites for a new uh, outdoor sea swimming uh, in, in Reykjavik, which is growing in popularity uh, every year. Uh, and it's a wonderful place. I encourage you to go there and, and take a look and you will be flabbergasted. Uh, in Saivarhöfði 38, we have the old cement plant and you see the silos there. Uh, this is being developed as a residential area. Uh, the whole area, Hövdar and uh, Brikkukörfi, uh, is uh, a part of the uh, well, biggest developing site for residentials in uh, Reykjavik uh, the next 10 years. We envision that uh, around uh, 7,500 units in total could develop at the larger area there. So uh, this will all be transformed and that opens up to a lot of uh, possibilities and opportunities when it comes to the old industrial uh, buildings and sites. Uh, so we want something different, something interesting, but something that uses the old structures. Uh, there is a lot of material on the, on the planning and the proposed uh, areas around available and will be made available in, in connection to the composition, competition. Uh, and, uh, and we are quite open to what uh, could be there as a, some kind of mixed project, uh, a wonderful uh, site for a restaurant or whatever. Uh, and uh, but, but this uh, has recently been uh, closed down as uh, an industrial site. The silos have not been used for quite some time. 
but we have tendered out already some of the residential building plots and will be uh, tendering out more uh, during the year. So in a few years' time, we, see we, we will have added around uh, 900 units just in the close proximity, and we are um, going out with a detailed plan for the, 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 the nearest sites uh, during this year as well. So a lot going on there. Uh, some of you may say, this looks so wonderful, why don't we keep it this way? Uh, and, uh, but, but we are open to some changes as well. Uh, anyway, this, these are the two sites. Uh, in my opinion, they are highly interesting. They are a part of a new Reykjavik that is being developed currently, but uh, both uh, have a chance to be kind of uh, a symbol and a beacon for those sites, uh, something new, fresh, and uh, unexpected even, that would uh, increase the quality of life of everyone uh, that live there or uh, create an attraction for people uh, going there to experience something new and different. Thanks a lot and good luck. Thank you so much, Dagur, for a great presentation of the sites, introduction. So, um, let me see. So, uh, unfortunately, Halldór Eriksson, architect, he could not be with us here today, but in his absence, Thráin Hauksson, landscape architect at the Landslag, is here and he will take us through the last year winning proposal, Living Landscape. Welcome, Thráin. So, hello. Uh, yeah, this was a last minute, minute step in, so I'll try to explain it from maybe more like our point of view from the for, for approach it like this. But this is uh, not uh, any like regular competition because this is a teamwork where we have the de developers and contractors included and everybody has to be committed to the project and because it's a matter of bidding also and not only <coughs> beautiful architecture and, and, and landscaping. And this is the team we had with uh, the architects from Jacob and McFarlane in Paris and uh, Tark Architects in Iceland and EPLA, because it's a sustainability, it's like a very EPLA engineers, a big part of the whole thing. And we are landscape architects and then we have the developers of Hilt, Uppav and Klasi and Arnold Kotlas contractors. And uh, the site, uh, not uh, what happened here, okay. Stepped into the PowerPoint, previous PowerPoint. Let's see. Mm -hmm. did, it, did it close? Or? Yep. Yeah, uh, the site is not far away from the silos and it's not, uh, it's actually quite the same. It's a, a brownfield uh, 
area with an asphalt uh, factory, but its location is by a city line, new city line stop, and it will be a, the location is also a landmark uh, location uh, because it's like almost the gateway to this new uh, de development area, but also a gateway to the uh, valley of, with the uh, Atleo Dalur is a valley with a Salmon River and a very uh, important uh, part of the green uh, like infrastructure of, of Reykjavik. And uh, it's on the blue-green uh, sketch there. It's the, uh, yeah, how to describe, it's the white valley uh, going to the sea uh, in the middle of the picture. But it's also a challenge for uh, blue-green solutions uh, because we are, well, we have also been taking part in the uh, urban planning of the area, uh, so we know that we have to include all the drainage uh, thoughts included in that into this project. So uh, here we have uh, the footprint of the building uh, located by the, uh, by the new city line connecting east and west of the city and also connecting to the rivers of Adlerthaler. And the sketch showing what we were trying to, it's a quite a big, big structure and we are trying to uh, create shelter and we are trying to create a, a courtyard that will be accessible for sunlight and, because, and it's big enough for that. And uh, there are uh, those levels with, uh, on, 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 on the uh, ground level, we have the courtyard and commercial and offices and we have a kindergarten and then we have very mixed uh, housing uh, opportunities on other levels, both uh, for uh, shared house, shared living and uh, and student uh, housing and also uh, normal apartments and also working with uh, rooftop as a uh, feature landscape feature and uh, uh, like a co-living uh, opportunities and because this might be the first thing happening there at that site uh, we thought it would be very important to to create this courtyard so every people living there and working there would already have a finalist uh, environment inside the courtyard and and although something is happening maybe in a, a longer period of time in the surroundings but that courtyard would also uh, create opportunities to foster biodiversity uh, it would uh, create a visitor's uh, awareness on nature and uh, biodiversity and we would uh, be able to create a less uh, garden, a, a, like a, a biotope inside the uh, structure. And because we are not, uh, um, as we usually have in projects like that, we might have a basement with parking, but because it's a, it's a hub for the city line, we, we are not we have like direct connection to the ground and possibilities to develop a strong uh, habitat for, for uh, vegetation and bird life and whatever. And, and we would like to lead the blue-green solutions of the neighborhood into the, and through the courtyard and also from the roofs of the building. And we will treat the polluted water through that system. And so that it would get clean water into the adjacent rivers. This is just an example of a general floor with mixed uh, opportunities for, for, for housing on the upper levels. And then with the uh, top floor or, or the rooftop landscape, there would be like uh, facilities for uh, shared uh, opportunities for the, those people living and, and working in that, in that space. And we also saw the possibility of like a, um, a kind of a maybe a museum that would have a 
pedagogical uh, purpose for like children from all over the city, like an entrance into the and, and entrance into the volley. And these are like uh, renderings of the building. Uh, as I said, it's a landmark uh, feature into the development of the whole area and it creates this uh, sheltered courtyard and the possibilities of using the rooftops. And all, always, we are always looking at the uh, ground levels as very transparent, both in like uh, glazed facades and but also possibilities to uh, to enter from each side uh, into the courtyard and through and the uh, the sustainable sustainability part is a very uh, uh, important thing in the whole thinking of the building when and we have been looking into uh, that it should, uh, we are aiming for a Priam, Priam excellent uh, in that case, and it's a tool to support the 10 challenges we are meeting with uh, in, in constant materials, energy, health and well being, waste management, uh, land use, pollution, transport, and innovation. And uh, we see the possibility of reducing energy use by 40% and embedded carbon by 80%. And the big moment in Oslo last uh, spring was always a good, good kick, but uh, we are also looking forward to uh, starting this project for reality. The team with the, uh, of the designers, like. Uh, Brenda McFarlane from Jeff McFarlane and uh, Helga Birner from Ebla and Halter, who was supposed to do this talk on the, on the right side, from Tark Architects. And finally, we have a short video running here in another file. Maybe you should help me with that. <laughs> it should explain itself. Right here.
thank you, Thrawn, for a, a great presentation, a good introduction to Living Landscape. We are all loving this project. And thank you for stepping up in uh, such a short notice. So the last one to present here with us and end this program here at the City Hall is Þórhildur Fjóla Kristjánsdóttir. She is the director from uh, the Green Building Council Iceland. And she's going to talk about the Green Cities with C40. Welcome, Thorilder. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice to be here today. Congratulations, Reykjavik, to participate in Reinventing Cities again. And thank you also for a very nice presentation about the project. The Green Building Council is, of course, thrilled that Reykjavik is enthusiastic and participating in this project. Um, my focus today is just a little bit about the, the general aspects of what we need. Uh, we need greener cities and how this can be a facilitator to on the, on the way there. Uh, if you don't know what the Green Building Council is, we are an NGO, we are a non-profit organization, uh, working like business to business, mostly with educating and, and kind of uh, knowledge sharing. Uh, and we are having, we just recently celebrated our 10th year, uh, 10th year birthday, we were established in 2010. Uh, and we are now uh, members of the World Green Building Council, and the World Green Green Building Council is established in 70 countries around the world. We are very fortunate. We have almost 50 members of the building, uh, built environment companies and institutions that are members of the Green Building Council. And without our strong membership co co cooperation, we wouldn't exist. So thank you, everybody, and Reykjavik Municipality, also Landslag and Tark and Epla, and many people that are participating in this project are also members of the Green Building Council in Iceland. These are the two re most recent ones, the BM, Adlao and Rein. We're happy to have them with us. As I said, we are working in 70 countries and we have, I think, the Reinventing Cities is also international. We have good ideas. We have idea sharing also because you have a, have a, a website and that's also the, the role of the Green Building Council is to translate some of this knowledge that is ongoing on green buildings around the world into the Icelandic context. Uh, we have a uh, board of seven members. And one of them is here, Ragnar, the chairman of the board. Uh, and I'm, I'm the, uh, yeah, currently I'm the only employee working uh, there now as the director. Um, we all know this, and I'm not going to kind of dwell on this, uh, this kind of climate challenge. And as you, we were mentioning this, that building and the built environment and the cities, they are like hold one of the key solutions to our big challenge. And I think what we actually are going to see in the next decade, 2020, it's a kind of a defining moment in history where we are going to have to take this large U-turn and it's not going to happen on our cruise control <laughs> on our car. I think we will definitely need to find, feel the shift. And it's, it's something is going to be easy and going to make our lives more happy and nice and with the green buildings and the livable cities. Some things are going to be difficult and challenge us a bit. But I think uh, the buildings, building sector is a large contributor to greenhouse gas emission in the world. Mostly, of course, because we are using a lot of fossil energy to heat up our and cool our houses. But also that we are using a lot of energy intensive materials and carbon intensive materials. And as you said, we are not only often if you're talking about uh, environmental issues, we talk about uh, greenhouse gases, but it's also about how we are respecting nature and the human beings as a part of nature. We have for a very long time not been respecting nature as we should. And this bird is making a nest. You can say we are making homes with our green buildings. And what kind of nature are we now? This is actually just a picture from Norway, the clean and nice Norway. It's the bird island uh, out of the west coast of Norway. And almost all the birds in this, uh, this area are making their nests out of plastics. So it's quite sad to see often how we are not doing what we should be doing. So hopefully we will, we will see our and take our responsibilities seriously. Uh, if you look at the life cycle perspective, I think that's a big part of looking at uh, the building sector. You need to think about the whole life cycle. 
We are getting emissions from all of the cycles of the life cycle states of a building. We are, are transporting materials, we're producing materials, we're extracting materials. All the way, we're having greenhouse gas emissions. We are having a lot of machinery at the site. We are getting emissions from the energy use. We are getting uh, emissions from maintenance, new materials coming in. And of course, we're always oh, having some uh, emissions from the dismantling and waste treatment and everything. So this is the kind of the, but we, what we see in Iceland and also I think in Reykjavik, we have a kind of a lack of perspective how much this sector has of greenhouse gas emissions. Because sometimes it seldom comes into the policy making. We see like in the climate action plan of the government, buildings get almost no attention currently. Because the number is only two or three percent, only looking at the machinery at the building site. So the materials, the transport, a lot of things are not taken into consideration like the energy. It's just like in different categories. So we would really like at the Green Building Council to see a more holistic uh, documentation of the, the real impact. Um, this is just, just a reminder a little bit because we are talking that the Reinventing Cities project is a great inspirational project. But if you kind of look at the stages today, most buildings in Reykjavik have free parking. If you're going to buy a new electric bike, it's a little bit difficult because when you come as a visitor someplace, where are you going to put it? Are you going to put it outside? There's no kind of visible inside yet for most of the buildings in Reykjavik. Uh, most, people, most buildings in Reykjavik do not have walking and public transport visitors as their primary or in focus, proper, uh, prior, first priority visitors. Nobody almost is using reused materials. Nobody is using recycled materials or very little and no buildings in Reykjavik are measuring their energy use. So this is kind of the status. We are not so much thinking about these issues. And you can say that in the, in the general focus of European buildings, we see that low energy building, passive house building, zero energy building. In Reykjavik, I think we can call our buildings high energy buildings because we have a clean energy and we have a lot of energy use per square meter. We have quite low demand still for green concrete and green solutions. Uh, we see that when people are tearing down buildings, they're just almost putting on the bulldozer, not thinking about the embodied materials, what can we do with them. Uh, and I think we also see that we have a lot of space inefficiency. We're talking about the circular economy. We need to think really about not only uh, using the, our cars more effectively, but also sharing our buildings more effectively. Because some spaces are used maybe less than 4% of the time. And I think, unfortunately, of course, we have Bream, and I want to also applaud Rikke City because they have been using Bream, and they have been using Bream for their local swimming pool and also for their new schools. So that's a very good thing, uh, and we see that they should, could be aiming for excellence in some of the, the new, new projects. But unfortunately, most projects have limited environmental focus. But we have, of course, some examples of green buildings and living the landscape. I really like to see that happen. But our, in our, my opinion, there should be many more. Um, and this is, I think, the Reinventing Cities, it puts like a uh, focus on the green solutions. And this is, I think, very important people, all the green solutions, they need to be the easy ones. They need to be, yeah, yeah, I'm going to, uh, to have a, it should be the uh, most comfortable thing should be the greener solution. So all, everything we're planning, but now it's a little bit the private car that is the simple, that's the most comfortable solution. But these people that are biking and that are taking the public transport, they need to be on the red carpet and all other green solutions. Um, like I was telling you, there are a lot of life cycle emissions from the uh, building sector, but we also have solutions to almost all of these things. And that's where Reinventing Cities comes up with finding the, using our creativity, finding the solutions. We, we don't have the overview of the emissions. Okay, we just calculate the overview, just get the overview. We calculate design phase life cycle emissions. We find the low carbon solutions. In Iceland, we can, we can use zero emission transport. We have a lot of clean electricity. We can have electric buses, electric machinery. Uh, we, can, we have a lot of good creative ideas. We can design for flexible buildings. We can reuse materials. We can use uh, low carbon materials. It's, it's just to do it. And also, even though we are having this, uh, we have this clean energy, but I think we can also focus on 
using it as wisely as we, we can, because I think in a way we have this clean energy, but sometimes even when you're wasting it, it's much nicer to wait, use it uncomfort, like to have, uh, yeah, we are enjoying instead of wasting our energy. Because when it's just maybe flying out of a very well-insulated window, we're not noticing it. It's just like throwing it out of the window. But if we are using it to kind of, uh, for a swimming pool or a hot steam bath, we are kind of, ah, oh, this is use. This is, we should be using it there, not wasting it. And of course, this, this circular design and designing for durability is kind of key. And that's where my head is now. I think I'm kind of uh, in a period where I only see that we should be using reused materials because I think that is the future. We should try to reduce embodied carbon as much as we can. And I think we, we have been hearing so many kind of tragic news about the climate, about the Arctic heating. And I think actually what we see also in the Green Building Council is a lot of raised awareness. And personally, I thought of myself as a kind of a green radical, but I think that we have to see that the green radical is going to be the new norm. And I think that's where the reinventing cities is going to help us. It's going to help everybody to see that these solutions, these 10 criteria you're putting forward, there have to be the new norm. And that's why I think it's a very important participation that we, we get there when we participate there. We get the minds to, to work together. Um, this circular design, I'm just, just a short slide about that. It is actually possible to think, because I think society's demands are always changing. Our, our need for space is changing. Now we maybe have a lot of more need for nurseries than we're going to need in 30 years. Are we going to build nurseries now and, and a lot of money? And, and, but building flexible, building um, buildings that we can kind of redesign and and uh, circular, circular, uh, circular thinking in all the things we're doing also in the building sector, I think we can uh, get uh, a lot of much better resource efficiency. Uh, these are just some ideas of that. But uh, just to, uh, to finish, I think uh, the reinventing set is, is uh, very important for, like I said, raising awareness. And in, in uh, Iceland, we have maybe traditionally be a bit, little bit like uh, lazy about the built environment because we have the green energy. But green buildings are about much more than only green geothermal heating. Like we know, there are many other criteria for a green building than only geothermal energy. We can just say, hey, we can, we can, we can, this is something that we can kind of embrace. This is easy. But doing all the other stuff is a little bit more challenging. And we should notice and, and, and embrace that. Uh, I think also what we see from the C40 is that uh, bringing these criteria and working in these interdisciplinary teams is a learning course for everybody because people that are maybe not usually talking together, they start talking together. And I think that discussions, we are always learning through those discussions. And that's very, very valuable. And it's also helping, like I said, it's helping moving our local norms. Uh, that, okay, if something was radical for some, time, some years ago, now we see the reinventing cities, they are going step forward, they're using more ideas, so it can also just showcase what is actually possible within the green building sector. And I think Iceland has a great opportunity to have the greenest buildings in the world because of our, our landscape and energy uh, resources. So I think this is a kind of something that we should embrace. Um, and just, just a little bit announced that we have a lot of uh, information now on our website. The Green Building Council just recently finished a lot of research projects that we got financed from Manuskistobnen. And uh, just so it's up our website. And also just to notice that we are, uh, we are working a lot on, of, about embodied carbon now. And the World Green Building Council gave a very nice overview of our challenges in looking at embodied carbon, which is the embodied uh, emissions in the materials. And of course, this is, this is what we're all aiming for, a better future where we all take the built environment seriously and, and we're going to reach those goals in 2030. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thorhildur, for a really inspiring presentation. Um, I'm going to show you, we made a few videos from the sites, so before we go to the, uh, to the bus, let me see. We'll start with Guvenes.
And then we will have another one for Saivarhavde. Uh, uh, Bit dramatic. <laughs> so those were the sites. There was another video playing underneath. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we will not have time for a Q&A &A session now, but we can have it at the bus, or you can send us uh, emails uh, through the site, uh, the competition site. But. Uh, Feel free to have something more, coffee, juices, sandwiches, before we leave. Maybe we say 10 minutes out in the front entrance in the bus. But thank you so much for being with us here tonight. It was, um, it was really nice. Or today, not tonight. <laughs>